Hello, in this video I'm going to solve the following problem for you. The problem is to evaluate the following integral. Integral from 1 over 2 to 1 of sine inverse x over x squared. That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do the calculations correctly, the answer that you will get will be ln of 2 plus square root of 3 minus pi over 6. Okay, I want to use the method of integration by parts to uh, calculate this integral. So let me write the formula here. So integral of u dv from a to b have been calculated as u times v from a to v from a to b minus integral from a to b v du. Okay, in order to be able to use this formula, I will rewrite my integral in this form. So this will be integral from 1 over 2 to 1. I write sine inverse x first, and then I multiply it by 1 over x squared dx. Okay, now I want to give the role of u to this and give the role of dv to this. Okay, so u is equal to sine inverse of x, but I need du in the right hand side, so I need to calculate du. du is simply differentiating the sine inverse, which is a standard function, it's 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And then I have this to be dv, but as you see, I need v on the right side as well. So dv is equal to 1 over x squared dx. So this is a very simple integral. So if I want to find a primitive function for v, v is simply minus 1 over x. Okay, so now everything is ready. So if I call my integral i, then i becomes equal to u times v, u times v, which is minus 1 over x sine inverse of x. It goes from 1 half to 1 minus the integral of v times d. v is this, includes a minus sign. So if I pull the minus sign out, it will make this one positive. And then I will have integral from 1 over 2 to 1 v times du, yes? So if I multiply them, it becomes 1 over x square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Okay, so that part is very simple. We just plug these numbers in and subtract them. The only problem in front of us is actually calculating this integral. Okay. Uh, so, what we can do, we can separate it into two parts. Let me call this part part A, and let me call this new integral, integral J. Okay, so let us calculate A first. So, A is equal to, I replace every x with the upper limit, so it becomes minus sine inverse of 1, and then minus, I have another minus sign, so it becomes plus, and I replace x with 1 half, so this becomes simply 2 sine inverse of 1 half. Okay, sine inverse of 1 is pi over 2, so it becomes minus pi over 2, and sine inverse of 1 half is pi over 6, multiplied by 2 is pi over 3, and if you calculate this, the value that you get for a is uh, pi over 3 minus pi over 2, which is pi over 6. This is my A. Now, to calculate J, okay, to calculate J, what I do, I will use the trigonometric substitution. So that's a very standard integral, yes? So what I do, I introduce this. I would say that let x be equal to, so let me define it like this. So let theta be equal to sine inverse of 
x. Okay, so what does it mean? If I introduce theta to be sine inverse of x, then theta will be a number in the fourth or the first quadrat. Yes, that is the definition because you know that the range of sine inverse is actually this. Okay, so what is the meaning of this? This means that sine theta is equal to x. And then I calculate dx from here by differentiating both sides. So dx becomes equal to, this is cosine theta times d theta. Okay. So in Adams, actually in other calculus books, they start from here. But I prefer to start from there because if you start from there, you know something about the range of theta. Okay. But if you start from here, you don't know in which quadrant theta is. And it matters. I will tell you when. Okay. So when I go to this integral, I have limits. So x goes from 1 half to 1. This would then imply that my theta goes from sine inverse of 1 half to sine inverse of 1. This is the substitution theorem. And then theta goes from pi over 6 to pi over 2. Okay, so if x goes from 1 half to 1, I realize my theta goes from pi over 6 to pi over 2, and then I start substituting what I have here. So integral j is equal to integral, instead of going from 1 over 2 to 1, I go from pi over 6 to pi over 2, and then instead of um, instead of uh, dx, I can put cosine theta d theta. So let me write it here, cosine theta d theta. And I have a 1 in the numerator. And instead of x, I put sine theta. And then I would write 1 minus, and instead of x again, I put sine theta. So that will be my answer. Okay, but 1 minus sine theta squared is cosine theta squared. So let me write it here. It becomes square root of cosine theta to power 2, which becomes absolute value of cosine theta. But because theta is either in the fourth or in the first quadrant, and that is exactly why I wrote it like that, then cosine theta is always positive, regardless of the integral of, uh, regardless of the interval of integration. So this becomes cosine theta simply. Okay, so if I put that here, this is cosine theta, we'll cancel that cosine theta, I am left with one sine over theta, which is cosecant theta. So this integral becomes integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2, cosecant theta d theta. And if you have seen previous chapters, this is calculated before, and this integral is minus ln of absolute value of cos cosecant theta plus cotangent theta. And of course, theta goes from pi over 6 to pi over 2. And then I have to put the numbers in. So this becomes minus ln of cos uh, cosecant of theta. So let me write it down. Cosecant of pi over 2 plus cotangent of pi over 2, absolute value, minus, there is also a minus here, so it becomes plus ln of cosecant of pi over 6, plus cotangent of pi over 6. And then I have to simplify things. So cosecant is 1 over sine, okay, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this becomes simply absolute value of 1. But what is cotangent of theta? Cotangent of pi over 2, sorry, it is 0. So it becomes 1 plus 0. It becomes ln of 1. But ln of 1 is 0. So I can simply clean it. And then I have to calculate this one. So this becomes ln. Because both of them are in the first quadrant, both of them are positive. So I really don't need absolute value. This becomes 1 over sine of pi over 6. 
And cotangent of pi over 6 is also uh, square root of 3. Yes? And then sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So this 1 over 1 half becomes 2. So this becomes simply ln of 2 plus square root of 3. So we learned that j is this number. We learned that a is that number. So the whole integral that I was looking for is the sum of a and b, which becomes ln of 2 plus the square root of 3 minus pi over 6. And that's exactly the answer that we have to submit. Okay, here I can also review how can we calculate this. That is very simple. So if I want to calculate integral of cosecant of theta, d theta, the trick is to multiply the numerator and the denominator by this combination. Yes? This is the trick that was given uh, previous to this problem in Adams. Okay, so why this is good? Let me just multiply the numerator in. So this becomes cosecant theta squared, and then I will have cosecant theta, cotangent theta, divided by cosecant theta plus cotangent theta d theta, okay? And now, if you say, let me take the denominator to be u, so I would say let u be cosecant theta plus cotangent theta, and if I calculate du, the derivative of cosecant is minus cosecant theta cotangent theta, and the derivative of this one is cosecant uh, theta squared, sorry, with a minus sign. And then I have this d theta. Okay? And then you see that that is exactly what appears here, except for a minus sign. So I pull a minus sign out, so it becomes cosecant theta cotangent theta plus cosecant squared theta d theta. Okay? So this means that this integral is equal to, so the question mark here is integral Instead of the numerator, I can put minus du, I put the minus sign out, then I have du, and in the denominator, I put u. So, and that is a very famous integral, so it's minus ln of absolute value of u, but u is this guy, so this becomes cosecant theta plus cotangent theta. Okay? Uh, but one point that I found a little bit surprising, because this problem... Uh, in Adams is in section 6.1 or something they are talking about integration by parts here they will introduce how to use trigonometric substitutions later in the same chapter so in principle they shouldn't have given this question in that section because if you want to calculate this integral you have to use the trigonometric uh, substitution. I don't know. If you can find other way of solving this integral, which is independent of trigonometric substitution, I would be very happy if I see it in the comments below this video. Okay, so I hope that this video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.